Hey y'all, it's Sigal Aaron, and I'm going to be playing some MTG Arena, which is Magic the Gathering's latest online version of their card game. I've created a new account for the first time, and so I was thinking of doing a series where I go through a free-to-play playthrough from a new account without having any of the cards or whatever, show you how I get through the tutorial, and... Uh, then go on to see how high I can rank up with, you know, being strategic about how to go about getting cards and stuff um, without spending money and stuff. So it is quite difficult to rank up with the cards you start with, but it is possible. But yeah, so I've just come into the game for the first time and it is giving me a basic tutorial where it is trying to show me how to play. <laughs> You tap your planes for the cost of the card to Now it actually does this automatically for you um, when you drag the And so this is a two mana shrine keeper, a human cleric who costs two white mana. So yes, um, I will see what cards I get when I am done playing against the color challenges and then I will start playing uh, games to get achievements like the daily quest and stuff so that I can get some gold enter into drafts and stuff like that right now it is just taking you through the basics of the game so if you haven't played before and you might be interested in following what's happening on screen but uh i've been playing magic for quite a while so quite not relevant to me and they are playing a creature on their end obviously they make it like quite easy uh, at the beginning to win but they do start adding challenges in a bit at a time okay so you can now play a creature and I'm just going to attack with both of them. They will block one, but one will get through and do that. Thank you, Orb. That's, this animation doesn't play normally in the game. It's showing you how to compare the stats because you're going to have to do that basically in your head. Compare the numbers and see if you can survive. If you don't like doing like addition and subtraction of small numbers, then the game might get annoying. Okay, so I am just going to attack with both of them again. Your opponent can block and kill your attacking creatures. Don't attack this one. Okay, it doesn't want me to attack. I mean, Depending on what you draw, but like, probably a bad idea to attack. Wow. Especially if they have a feral roar. <laughs> okay, so... It is now their attack, and I'm going to block. I'll use the creature that has less tough, uh, the same toughness, but less power that I have more power left to attack unless they have trample if the creature that you're blocking has trample then it will do extra damage above the toughness that you're blocking so now I can destroy the tapped creature I don't think these cards are cards you play with in standard also normally start at 20, not 7. Okay, so tap all creatures your opponent controls are tough or less. Pretty contrived, but just enough. <laughs> so there's no real agency in this part of the game. You are just doing what it tells you to. And I actually think it's good of them to start off with something simple like that for people who are new to the game. Obviously they could let you skip it, but if you just created an account. And I've unlocked a card, which 
is two white mana, three of any color, and three power, four toughness. And when it enters the battlefield, I gain four life. Okay, so I'm going to have to play five games to get through. And I have six cards unlocked. So, so I think I'm going to try and go through all five of these for this video, and then I'll get on to the next thing after that. Haste means that it can sack the turn it it's played. Usually red cards are the ones that are most likely to be placed, but it's not only red. Green creature. I don't have anything to play on turn one because you can only put down one land at turn. That is a lot of one drops. You can all attack. <laughs> okay, maybe worry just a little bit. This actually feels like playing standard because there's a lot of decks in standard which play one ones with haste. <laughs> but then they like have extra It's pretty cold over here, I don't know if you can see Block one of them, I will survive. It only does one damage and I have two buffs. Creature dies when it gets to the very have you now on Mirabo? And your creatures. Okay, so let's play a land and I'm just gonna play both of them. And there's no point attacking, what's gonna tell me, but if I attack they would they don't have to, but in all likelihood they would block. Especially when it's the AR. <laughs> and so they probably on blocking, I mean attacking with everyone here is a bit suspicious. I don't know if you would do that if you were playing a game because I can clearly block all of the stuff. What I'll do is I'm going to block one of the small ones and then I'm going to double block. And so double blocking lets me add the power that both of mine to what gets dealt. Help kill it. One of mine will die, but it doesn't have enough power to kill both. Mirabo, stop killing your own troops. What a raging goblin, isn't it? And now you're just killing your own. <laughs> animation. And now I can just play land and attack. I guess they're getting you used to drawing lands because. Didn't have anything really to play that turn. That get a little worried for going for me. And there is a card like that for three mana. Every beginning of combat creates as many uh, one ones as it's possible. Conveniently, just enough mana, and this is the card I unlocked. So I'm going to gain full life from that. And now I can probably. What did it say? Because. Yeah, attacking is probably a good idea here. Even though they can kill that if they want. Yeah, double blocking. Kill it. They could have also single blocked into. But now they can't attack me because I have a bigger creature. Yeah, you wouldn't do that normally. You would not attack if you can just really see it. Okay. okay, I get another spirit card. And I can actually attack because I have three power and they have three toughness. So if they do block, the creature will die. And I still have another creature and not attacking who can block. They don't attack. They don't block. So yeah. Not blocking lets them attack, but I have another creature. I could have just let it through, to be honest. Gone down in life and then attacked with both of my creatures. But it's always fun to 
If they attack with something that has haste and then destroy it so at sorcery speed, I'm playing it. But they will likely attack because that seems to be it's like attack every turn. And normally mono red decks do attack every turn, so it's not that inaccurate. Play the shrine keeper. It can't block because it's tapped anyway, so let's just destroy it. And it... Yeah, that wasn't the optimal way of, of beating this challenge, but e more cards this way. And at less danger because you can let the attack through, lose life, and it's valid to do that, but against mono red where it's trying to get your life down as fast as possible, sometimes you Get yourself within range of some spells that end you all. Victor is sitting on my lap. Okay, so now I have eight cards unlocked. And these are getting like a little bit more challenging as they go. Okay. Merfolk are usually involve blue cards, um, sometimes green, sometimes black. They didn't actually play a Merfolk, they played a bird, which flies, so I won't be able to block it. But I will play my Sanctuary Cat. All cats need to have Sanctuary. River's Favor, Enchant Creature, Enchanted Creature gets plus one plus one. So they will probably put that on their creature, not mine. <laughs> it's a bit bigger. So Spectre. You are my Sanctuary Cat. Um, can't block that because it's flying. Okay, that, and I can enchant my own creature this time. And seeing as I can't block anyway, I might as well attack. I don't know if you can hear. <laughs> I can play Loxodon Linebreaker now, who is an elephant. Uh, I don't think there's much point attacking because they will simply block it and don't have like lifelink or anything that makes me gain life off. It is just unnecessarily uh, putting my creature tapped and sometimes cards are like destroy target tap creature like we saw earlier so you don't want to always tap out creatures. Yep. And so this card taps the creature and then doesn't let it untap during my untap step, which is basically makes it ineffective, but it's still there. So if I can get rid of the enchantment, then I'll be able to. But I think I will just enchant my Sanctuary Cat scan and see what it wants me to do. Now I have enough power to kill the crab if it tries to block with it. And they do. And they, they, they might as well block because it is a 0-4 so it can't attack and do any damage to me. It's literally that's it. Don't have anything else that they might want to block. So I will likely draw a land next because I need 5 mana to cost virtual guardian. And I will go up to 11 life, I'll attack, they will likely block. So in the mono red deck they were all about attacking, in this deck they were quite a lot about defending. And flying. Uh, normally flying creatures are not as big as one card, so there is a cost to that, but many attacks of a small creature can do as much damage as one big attack. 
flying lets it not die to blocks. This is cool because this will allow a creature to have flying. Um, I'm going to put it on to the spiritual guardian. Sanctuary cat's already big enough. And uh, if the opponent can kill one of my creatures, you don't want all of the enchantments on one creature. Just then you lose them all. Now I'm thinking of simply attacking with. Uh, if I put. I can block with the Sanctuary Cat and it won't die, but it also won't kill the Titanic Legosaur because it only has 5 power and the Legosaur is fixed. But now both of their creatures are tapped. Okay, so I can give my Sanctuary Cat another plus two plus two and attack with it if I want to, or leave it back to block, or put this on the other one. But I like the idea of putting it on the Sanctuary Cat and then attacking with both creatures. Because if they had a way of setting up the flying one, then they'd still have to block, and it is not big enough to play with this block. And there we go. Merfolk done. And we unblock two more cards. Confront the assault and tactical advantage. Cool. Dragon Hand, Shadow, and your opponent. And we have another Sanctuary Cat. Yay, Spectre. Okay, so now we are playing against someone who has instant speed cards. Cards with flash, or instant speed. And so we will need to put a land. But for now, I'll just be playing my Sanctuary Cat. My real life Sanctuary Cat is rather effective. <laughs> Wanna keep it from bumping the mic. And I'll attack because uh, they don't have a blocker but let's see if they have flash or a way to... Okay, destroy target creature with power 2 or less. Both of my creatures have 2 or less but I'm guessing that they might go for the 1 attack. And another planes, and I'm just going to play another Prime Keeper. See if they have anything instant speed again. Flash. Now they will likely block, otherwise, there's not much point costing it now. But that's okay. I still have more creatures on the board than them. To tell you the truth, I did see that coming. Okay. So let's enchant our creature and attack. What else can I do? Now, if they block, they will die, and, but they do prevent more damage, even though they don't kill my creature. And so the creature blocked, and they sacrifice it after it blocked, so it still doesn't let the damage go through. Don't even get a hit in. Play against a deck that has the sacrifice ability, you will likely see. I'm doing that a lot. Blocking and then sacrifice the creature. More value out of it. Now I have drawn, but I don't think I should attack. 
I don't want to just die for no reason. Okay, block first, then it's time for some trickery of your own. Target blocking or block creature. So I can only play this card when there is blocking happening. Block. And now we have a turn to which will give my creature plus two plus two, making it bigger than the bonus. We went from one list to one more, and now they're the one dying, and the one not dying. That is your uh, exercise in that thing. Doing a lot if you play. Let's attack again. And see. And they have another thing. So decks um, which do that kind of thing where they normally play cards in your turn like with flash or you know, instant speed. Normally they are trying, if they are also trying to stop you from doing any damage to them, um, you normally call that a control deck. But I'm going to play my tactical advantage again because 2 plus 2 equals 4. So if I don't play it, I die. Playing it means I don't die and their creatures still do. So now we have no cards. And when you have no cards in your hand, you're relying on whatever you get from the top of your deck. So they call it top decking. Some decks are better at in the top deck situation than others. And being able to draw more cards is actually very powerful. Of the only being able to do one or two normally. It's a tough. Now they might destroy this group. No, okay, cool. Will they play a creature at the end of my turn? So if they don't want to block, but they do have a creature with flash, then they'll play it end of my turn instead of before blocking. And so that normally would be enough to kill me because 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6 and I'm only on 5 life. Because I have conveniently got a card that can create creatures on the fly, be able to not die. <laughs> Confront the assaults and uh, to be honest, I only need to block one, and then I will have all plus one plus one, which is six, so I can kill them next turn, and they don't have any more cards. You could block all of them, and the game would probably keep giving you cards that are useful, but, uh, like, so this would have been enough, even without these, so, you know, but... I didn't know I was going to draw. Extra three. Okay. Be in touch with you later, Dragon Hand Shadow. Thanks for playing. Ooh. I have one more match on the tutorial. Although. The next part of the game is kind of tutorial as well. Inspiring command is a pretty cool card. You can look at all the cards once we finish the tutorials, but for now the decks, they are basically made for you. Like, you're not really building your own. Apparently I was fighting, I think this is Ugin. Nickel, oh, this is Nickel Bolas. Or is that Ugin? Hit Nickel Bolas, maybe that's what it is. I'm not, like, I've been playing Magic for a while, but I'm not so clued up on all the. Oh, it is Nickel. Nickel Bolas. Which is a card that I actually have in my other account. 
Defeat me and I'll let you go. Sounds good to me. I would enjoy being let go. I'm not so keen on that. But I'm not going to lose. So. Okay. I can't play anything because this is only for when you are blocking or getting the bots. I know this has been rubbing his snout on my nose, so you if you need to discard a card and you have enough lands already, you usually want to discard a land. Now I have enough land I in front of I made a bunch of those already. Will they attack? If they do, do I block? It's irrelevant. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, so I can play this now. So now it's looking like I should have kept that band earlier. But obviously it didn't give me a choice. No, they were such high cost. And we get a land. But we don't have enough of those. But we can use our tactical advantage. If they block, we will use it. So that'll put our toughness above two. The power is going to. A very talky uh, dragon, to be honest. Chatty McChat. Oh, no. I made a zombie volcanic dragon. Oh, now I have enough land for this third guardian, which will give me life. Seems like a good thing. I can also attack, seeing as I can't block a flyer, so I might as well reach the use. Aspiring Commander is one of the cards I unlocked, and it's a human soldier. They are playing a double cost. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell, can you move this? Uh, yeah. Okay, and then... Those two damage to each creature with half-life. And so their creature is flying, so you can get hit by that. Land, how convenient. And uh, so if you didn't draw a land there, you know, you could have, like, let's say I didn't draw a land for the next four turns. They would just keep doing four damage until they died. So. Fortunately, that can happen. But yeah, every time uh, another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under my control, I gain a life and draw a card. Which is useful if you have a lot of cards that match that criteria, because you can play one, you'll draw a card, play another one, draw a card. Until you don't. Wow, Nicol Bolas. It's greedy. So here is the first one. And another one. And they have a tapped creature. If I wait until the next turn, it will enter. Which. When it attacks, it will tap again. So I could have done it when they attacked. And to not let them have any mana, they might have a counter spell which would be able to counter that. Counter spells are almost always blue. Ow. Three damage to each other creature. Bolus, you are quite the talker. That's what we had before, but also what's cool with that is 
because it's making three one ones, they will be power two or less. They'll draw three cards and gain three life. So for now, I'm not going to attack because I need this dude alive for that. Um, let them attack with the chaos more if they want, and then I can use one of those one ones to block. We'll see what I draw, I guess. As well. Flying haste, another volcanic dragon, not a zombie this time. Um, and I can not block the flyer, but just go from one one. Oh, I can block the flyer. So I can block one and one, not take any damage. And I mean, saving six and saving four, that's a good way to use. I've drawn a whole bunch. Now I have one mana up, so I could give something plus two plus two. So, like, if I want to kill the dragon, maybe I can double block it. Give one of those plus two, then it's four. And I'll single block that guy so I don't take any damage. Then all of them die, but with the uh, tactical advantage, I kill the volcanic dragon, which is pretty useful. You wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't have the mana for it, so went that up by two, so it's three plus one is four. And I can also draw a card and gain a life next turn. So even though they have a big creature, I have a small one, I win full ability. Let's play the land. We have another tactical advantage, but I am going to play the cat and see what I draw. Meow. You're saying I'm the one that's got impudence. You're the one with impudence. Okay, flying with vigilance. Vigilance means when it attacks, it won't tap. So that guy's tapped because he attacked. Vigilance creatures. Do not tap when they attack, which means they can attack, and then they can also block on your turn. You have to be unblocked, untapped to block. Oh my god, beyond that of a card. That's impressive to me. Cards are pretty powerful. But then if I beat you, what does that mean? Beyond beyond god? Beyond god squared. Or am I like the god of gods? You're like... In between God of Gods and God, and I'm God of God. There we go. That is quite a cool cut to cut me like that. Oh, good creatures. Now, I could block. Uh, they want me to keep my angel alive. Um. They let me no <laughs> they're like oh my god oh they do let me uh, okay let's let's do what it says and keep my not gonna buff it up because it wouldn't be enough to kill the chaos and i get uh angelic reward Enchanted creature gets plus three plus three and has flying. So I would have been actually better letting that attack through than made my smaller sanctuary cat a way bigger one. But this is fine. Unless he has like a spell that can kill my creature next turn. But even though I only have one, I can attack because it's got flying, so they can't block. And then on my turn I'll be able to block. Only one of theirs. They have some big dudes and I can kill them. But they might be able to kill my Sarah Angel. Really cool. One of the coolest parts of magic is. So I'm thinking we just block the biggest one. They have tricks. Because I do. Nope. And I live to fight another day. And I gain four life. On the spirit problem. Have vigilance on the fair angel. 
Well, you should be impressed because uh, you were not that impressive. <laughs> so that is all five of the first part of the intro done. Woohoo! Thanks, Orb. That Marion Williamson. That dragon better think twice. Okay, so we unlock the chest and we get new decks. And that's pretty cool because now it's one of each color. With a few rares in each of them, it looks. So when you, when you play the game for the first time, you'll need to do all of that before you can actually build your own deck. Um, but now, I think we go to the normal scene, if there's not another. Do -do -do. Hopefully this has been uh, interesting. Obviously when I start playing against humans, it might be more interesting. <laughs> but if you are new to magic, then I think this video would be quite useful for just seeing what it's like what you got to do when you play, what kind of things to look out for, beforehand. Come on server. Like you know, we don't go to the normal scene, we go to the Cullen scene. Thanks Marion Williamson. <laughs> okay, so the uh, next uh, you have to do basically the same thing again, but using one, like using the white deck and then, you know, so you've done each color, white, blue, black, red, and green. So I will, I think it takes a little bit longer to do all of these. So I'll probably do a separate video for each of them. Um, may or may not record it straight after this. So if I'm wearing the same clothes next time, you know why, but yeah. That'll be it for today, uh, tutorial of MTG Arena, and uh, thank you for your time and attention. Feel free to like and subscribe, I'm going to be playing more MTG Arena for the foreseeable future, and uh, feedback is always welcome. Bye.